were all heavy with sadness and still are about what happened. But we nevertheless, there is hope. And there is hope when we have courage to help each other. You gotta be able to see those who are invisible, those who are marginalized and have been marginalized. And we have to give them opportunities. To She's be talking about the people that shot up that fucking subway and had all those people ducking for cover. Man, we just loved them more, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they would, they yeah. wouldn't, and there's a bad shot too. It was at the bottom, was like making them dance. And how the fuck are you supposed to see someone that's invisible too? Right. It, it's like it's it's just. I wish they were invisible, man. Like as far as like that would be, it would be much safer if they were invisible. But <laughs> this shit, this is this is insane, man. More free stuff. Just give them more free stuff, man, um, for shooting, for shoot, for terrorizing the community. The shooting is top of mind of Durham leaders who talked about it during tonight's council. We were all heavy with sadness and still are about what happened. But we nevertheless, there is hope. And there is hope when we have courage to help each other. You got to be able to see those who are invisible, those who are marginalized and have been marginalized. And we have to give them opportunities to participate fully in life and to give themselves an opportunity to do something different other than pick up a gun and shoot another person. And no one has been arrested for Sunday's shooting. Police did release pictures of the car they believe may be involved. If you have information about that shooting, you're asked to speak up. Just call the police immediately. So Man, uh Legend says if you die in a subway, you automatically go to hell. So just be careful, y'all. Yeah, man. Sun boy. <laughs> what is it? Sun boy. Um, this is, man. <sighs> I'm this tonight for show. Even though I don't think this is like that. This was this wasn't one of the best shows I've ever had because. I had to leave for a while and yada, 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 shows all over the place. But for some reason, this show is making me less optimistic about it. Like, I, I don't think I felt this, this, little, this less optimistic about the situation in a while after, after the show was over. For some reason, I don't know why, but I just feel like, <laughs> I feel dread about what the situation is. So, Yo, I yeah. Minneapolis Sometimes. had the 20th mass shooting of the year and also had the 22nd mass shooting of the year. And mm. Rising Crime News, she actually drove through Minneapolis and, and, and did some tour there. And one of the places that she went on Friday got all set. You said what? One of the places Rising what? Crime News, she actually drove through there, you know, showed, showed what it looked like with all the snow there. And mm -hmm. went to the neighborhoods and did the crime stats and stuff like that on a video, a 15 minute video. And then there was a mass shooting there, you know, that Saturday after after she left. I do like that you that you shout out the. I, I do like that you shout out the uh, Cash App and the PayPal um, after rapes. So that keeps me happy. Yeah, man. <laughs> You know, gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find a joy in life there. I yeah, man, it's, 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 it's rough, man. Um, let's see. Topping the 10 at 10, a pregnant mother gunned down in a Lakeville parking lot. Her baby survived. A suspect is in custody. Good evening. I'm Amy Hawker. And I'm Kelsey Carlson. Family telling us that 31-year-old Kyla O'Neill was nearly full term when she was killed on Sunday. Fox 9's Rose Schmidt is in our newsroom with mm, more mm, on what the investigation mm. holds tonight. Well, Kelsey, Kyla O'Neill's family says the newborn is a fighter. They say what makes this that much harder is she was so excited to bring her baby boy into this world. The bassinet, car seat, and diaper bag were all packed and ready to go. 31-year-old Kyla O'Neill's family says she was set to be induced on Wednesday of this week, bringing her fourth child into this world. But instead, in this crowded parking lot, she was fatally shot Sunday evening. Uh, we responded to the Amazon Fulfillment Center, which is located in Southern Lakeville, where we found the victim inside of a car. Lakeville police say someone who works at this Amazon warehouse called 911, and they responded to the scene. Commander Bill Girl says at that point, his officer's training kicked in. 
obviously if they knew she was pregnant, they're going to do everything they can, can do in their power to save her life, knowing that it's going to affect the life of the, the unborn baby at that point. O'Neill was then rushed to HCMC, but she didn't make it, and the hospital delivered the baby. Her family says she was a CNA who cared deeply about her children and described her as family-oriented, outspoken, and a woman who set her mind to something and achieved it. Police say there was a man in the car at the time of the shooting. Uh, he has been cooperating with our investigation. Um, he currently is in Dakota County Jail and is uh, in, um, uh, being booked on second-degree manslaughter charges at this time. A spokesperson. Manslaughter, second-degree manslaughter. Mm. So this, mm. I, I predict uh, jail time, but no child support in his future. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. That's that's just bizarre, man. Manslaughter, killing a pregnant woman. What happened? Tussle over the gun. He, according to him, <laughs> his version of events, and it didn't until they have more evidence that they can show that it was it was something else. They probably just charged them with that until they can be some more evidence. Um. You know what I like, I, that it's a baby when she wanted to be, and it's not when she don't. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah. hmm. wow. Apparently, she wood. actually had. Apparently, she actually had a fiance who survives her. Oh, that guy's the father of her child. That guy's that was in the car with her is not the fiance. I don't know. It says, <laughs> it says Kyla's father, father of the newborn. Was with Kat, was with her when he got, when, when they responded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the killer. Then. Uh -uh. Damn. If you ever watch that paternity court, you'll understand why, though. Yeah. Exactly, man. I, I seen that. Yeah. That's just ugly. Well, tears filled a Washington County courtroom today as a father learned his fate after admitting his role in a deadly shooting at a high school graduation party. Keith Dawson has been sentenced to seven years for a drive-by shooting that fueled deadly retaliation that claimed the life of his own. Seven years for a drive-by shooting for an adult <laughs> drive-by at a fucking graduation party. Seven years. <laughs> Minnesota, listen, if, if follow Floyd's lead, man. I see why Floyd was up there, man. Floyd was like, I'm getting out of Texas, man. I'm moving up here to Minneapolis, man has been sentenced to seven years for a drive-by shooting that fueled deadly retaliation that claimed the life of his own son. Paul Bloom has the latest. It's a choice and a decision that will haunt Mr. Dawson until he passes away. Keith Dawson's defense attorney argued for a reduced prison sentence Friday. His client and entire family still grief-stricken by the event of June 2021 Outside what should have been Jesus. a celebratory high school graduation party in Woodbury. <laughs> in a courtroom packed with supporters and loved ones, an emotional Dawson said he wished he could take it all back, make a different decision under the circumstances. Dawson pleaded guilty to a single count of drive-by shooting. He admitted he was trying to protect his sons, including 14-year-old Demarius Ekdahl. They had just called him. Oh, yeah, I remember this case. I did this case. His girl a glider? Yeah. They got some good his, hair. Yeah. Yeah, that's his son. I, I remember this case. Including 14-year-old Demarius Ekdahl. They had just called him from that party, saying some guys had stuck a gun to the youngster's head in an attempt to rob him. An armed Dawson then rushed to the scene. He claims only to fire warning shots, not targeting anyone directly. But some in the group returned fire, striking and killing Ekdahl in a fleeing vehicle. As part of the plea deal, the state capped its sentencing request at eight and a half years in prison. The defense wanted five. After hearing all the arguments, Judge Francis Green III settled at seven. Parents have an instinct to want to keep their children safe from harm. But on the other hand, the use of a firearm to settle a dispute is ill. Wow, the black male judge. They wanted uh, black male judge, man. This, uh, this is this is great, man. We usually assist them, man. Salute, man. Salute to the brother, man. Getting the opportunity, man. He's a pink pony. That motherfucker's a unicorn out in this bitch. <laughs> like, yo, you matter. 
<laughs> yeah, salute to this brother, man. He gave that brother seven, man. He said, brother, they wanted five. He gave him seven, man. He said, man. And then he was, I like the way he, he, he broke it down to him, man. Harm. But on the other hand, the use of a firearm to settle a dispute is ill-advised and dangerous. Violence only begets more, more violence. You want to hear my true feeling? You guys should focus the attention on the real killers. That's just my personal opinion. And one other note from here at the courthouse, as the family huh? left, they did tell me they were generally pleased that this judge departed. Yeah, because the um, who's the, the real killer, Zach? He, he he fired shots. His son was at a party and he mm. got robbed, and the son mm. called him. Is uh, both of his sons? They called oh, and said, "Look, the guy put a gun to our head." He picked him up, yeah. and then came back and went to shoot warning shots at them, and they shot back. And killed his son. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So that's that's a fucked up situation. That's man. awful. And yeah, then he showed up to court with some bootleg Burberry and shit. It's all sad, bro. <laughs> Burberry. Yeah, it's bad, bad, man. Um, this is just a bad situation all the way around, man. Charges filed today in St. Paul in a homicide. A young man shot to death outside his mother's home just two days after Christmas. The victim was walking home alone from work. Paul Bloom live for us outside St. Paul Police Headquarters. So, Paul, court documents here suggesting the victim was targeted for a robbery and then murdered. Amy, really, beyond that potential robbery the victim's family has described, these charges filed today give real no indication of a motive, certainly no connection beforehand between the suspect, the defendant now, and the victim. In the end, it really does appear this victim, Alex Becker, just 21 years old, was an innocent victim, a hardworking, beloved son, 